My name is Michener, flight surgeon. They knew the plane was going down. The first one they notified was me. C4. It's a radio. Radio communication has always been an indispensable part of flying. Radio has saved countless lives in aerial emergencies, but never in a more exciting way than this one. This is a story of Captain Henry Michener, and it should start on the flight line. At the Norton Air Force Base, San Bernardino, California. And this is Captain Michener, a flight surgeon. How about that, Doc? Good as new. Any pain at all? Ah, oh, once in a while when I lean on it. Well, let's keep it that way. Stay away from motorcycles, Sergeant. Oh, I sure will. Norton Tower, this is Air Force 00421, ready for takeoff. Roger, 00421, clear for takeoff. That's Captain Kovacs' voice, isn't it? Yes, sir, he's flying the Goonie Bird. <laughs> You better let me see that wrist again in a couple weeks, Sergeant. All right, sir. What was my time off? 00421. Off at 21. Roger, Norton Tower. Air Force 00421, carrying a high priority cargo on a routine flight to Travis Air Force Base, California, was airborne at 1221 Zebra, Tuesday, July 14th. In mountainous areas, there is always turbulence, but on hot days, the uneven heating of the ground creates massive thermal updrafts which can sometimes flip an aircraft completely on its back. Rough over the mountain. Say, Captain, is there any place near Travis where you can shop? At PX. No, I mean one of them fancy places. For an anniversary present. Anniversary? You just got married. It's our two months anniversary. Bees really have about celebrating things. <laughs> you guys may have the right idea, but I still think it's the bachelor's life that's worth celebrating. You know, Bee really throws it. On our one week's anniversary, she baked a cake and had a lot of presents for everything. Just gag presents. She's really nuts about that. It's a nice way to be nuts. You got it, George. Look, we ought to be back in time for you to get into Riverside before the shops close. I figured I'd buy her a pair of earrings. She likes the long, dangly kind. You know, the kind that create a lot of drag. Number one seem rough? We got a fire, number one. Feather it. Stop the mixture, number one. Get the firewall shut off, Bell. Pump lever's okay, it's in position number two. Get the extinguisher. Ignition off. Number one, fuel tank off. The fire seems to be out. I got it. 
The airspeed's dropped just below 120. Rough air, that's not much margin of safety above stalling speed. Look, call Norton Tower, tell them we're returning to base and declare an emergency. Norton Tower from Air Force 00421. 00421, go ahead. Norton Tower from 00421. We are approximately 18 miles northwest of field. Returning to base, declaring emergency. 00421 from Norton Tower. What is the nature of your emergency? Fire number one engine. Fire out, engine feather. 421, understand. How many passengers on board? Three crew members, Norton. Roger, we're cleared for straight in approach to runway 05. Wind east, eight knots, gusting. Altimeter 29.95. Call on final with gear down. Well, let's see if we can get it back on the ground. C-47, 18 miles from base, returning on single engine emergency. Three crew members. Norton Tower to all aircraft in vicinity. I have a C-47 single engine emergency. Stay clear of traffic pattern until advised. Sergeant Davidson next alerted all stations on the primary crash circuit. My office, dispatch, fire, GCA. I immediately headed for the flight line. Those updrafts pack a pretty good punch. How's your cargo, Sergeant? It's all secure, sir, but I'm pretty shook. Cheer up. It could be smooth and foggy. <laughs> Next to losing an engine, I like a Pollyanna best. Runaway prop? It's tearing itself to pieces. We'll have to cut it. Cut it. Emergency is going to crash land eight miles from the field. Kill the master switch. You're down and locked. You okay? Sergeant, is he down yet? Yes, sir. Looked pretty rough. I saw him go in. George! Come here, give me a hand! 
Get on this side. Tip it up. Slide it up in there. Let's get some light in here. Lost a lot of blood already. Must have cut an artery. The wound's so high, I don't know how we can get a tourniquet on. They better get us a doctor right away. But we tore up the radio when we hit, so break out the URC force. And throw me a first aid kit. There, sir. Now, he's approximately here. Rough country. No roads in. Pretty inaccessible, sir. Might be able to get a chopper into a clearing. Norton Tower, this is 00421. Over. He's on emergency frequency. 00421, this is Norton Tower. 00421 to Norton Tower. We are down in a partial clearing. The flight engineer is injured. Here, let me have it. Now, this is Captain Kovac. Sergeant Hines has a deep cut in his right thigh. Must have cut an artery. Now, I can't get a tourniquet on above the wound. I got a pressure bandage on it, but he's still losing blood fast. Now, we need a doctor. Over. This is Major Anderson, Ira. We'll get you your doctor. Get the flight surgeon and alert the chopper. Yes, sir. Tower to flight, surgeon. Tower to flight, surgeon. Go ahead. C-47 crash landed crash miles landed. from here. The crew uh -huh. member has a cut artery, and they can't use I a see. tourniquet. Well, tell him if he can't get the tourniquet above the wound, to put his hand over the pressure bandage and press as hard as necessary. I'll get there as soon as possible. towards the scene of the accident, another rescue team started Overland. Their mission, in case we failed, to reach the stricken plane on foot. You can't lower me? Not a prayer. But there's a man bleeding to death down there. It isn't going to help him any if I kill us, too. How about a jump? Not from a copter. The force of the rotors would keep the chute from opening. How about a delayed jump from altitude? Take me up one of them and let me drift down. That would get me off under your blades. With this wind, you wouldn't land within 10 miles of your target. And that's not saying what kind of shape you'd be in when you got down. A few 
2,000 feet and we still can't reach them. We're lucky we're not smashed up, too. There's a highway about four miles from them. They'll just have to walk out. One of those men is bleeding to death. We wait. Only two of them will walk out. Air Force 00421 from Air Force Helicopter 0527. Air Force 0527, this is 421. What is the condition of your patient? Still losing blood. Can you get his pulse? Well, it's very fast and it's hard to count. He feels cold, but he's sweating a lot. Clammy, he's in deep shock. That wind looks pretty rough, Doc. You gonna be able to make it? No, and he'll never live long enough for the ground rescue team to get in by foot. Can you come up with any idea? If we don't get to that man, he'll be dead within an hour. Doc, there's just no way to do it. I can't take the responsibility. We'll have to keep talking, see what we can improvise. All right, let me get a little altitude. See if I can get out of this turbulence. I feel like a yo-yo. Captain, take off the bandage a minute and take a careful look at the wound. Doctor's paid to know what he's doing. Can you see the severed artery? Look, I don't even know what I'm looking for. Put your fist against his stomach, then press in as hard as you can. All right. And stop the bleeding. The pressure on the aorta cuts off the major supply to the legs. Wouldn't this trick of pressing on the aorta uh, give a ground rescue party time to get to us? Lieutenant Wright and I could spell each other. No. You'd have to keep releasing pressure to prevent gangrene. Every time you did, it would start again. There's only one way to save that man. That's to tie off the artery. That's what you're going to have to do. You mean operate on him? Look, I'm no doctor. I wouldn't know where to begin. Prepare yourself for a course in surgery. How much of the artery can you see? I'm not sure I can see any of it. I mean, I'm not sure where it is. All right, release the pressure. Be able to tell the artery the minute you take the pressure off. Put the pressure back. Got it zeroed in? Well, I can see where it's coming from, but I can't actually see the artery. The artery is probably retracted into the tissue. You'll need a hemostat. Wait a minute. If you can't lower me, can you lower this instrument case? On the cable? No chance. I couldn't get low enough. I'll never get that artery without instruments. If they don't get it, how about dropping the case? I know I'm beginning to sound monotonous, Doc, but if we put a chute on it, it'd end up in the next state. If we let it fall free, there wouldn't be anything worth picking up. Any other suggestions? I don't know. I doubt that the paramedics would risk a drop in these conditions, but it might be worth a try. We could radio a request for them. Wait a minute, that's it. That's what? The radio repair kit. Captain Kovac, does your flight engineer have a set of tools on board? Should have. See if you can find a pair of needle nose pliers in the radio repair kit. You heard him. Check the radio compartment. You'll need something for a suture, too. There should be some electrician's wire. Get the very finest you can find. Look for some electrician's wire, the thinnest we got. Roger. I got the pliers. Any luck, Captain? We have the pliers. Got the wire, too. We have them both. Use the pliers as a hemostat. Get a good bite on the end of the artery. Hold it and tie the wire around it. You'll need Lieutenant Wright to help you. I'll try my best, but... What do we do first? I'll be sure those pliers are clean. I don't mean surgical sanitation. We don't worry about that now. Just make sure there are no bits of metal on it. Now, when you're ready, momentarily release pressure. Repeat it as often as you have to to make absolutely sure where the artery is. When you're sure, use those pliers as gently as possible. You don't want to harm any of the other tissue. But when you do get on it, hold tight. Is that clear? Roger. I don't know how much longer I can hold this position, Doc. Would more altitude help? Might. Depends on winds a lot. Let's go up. Good. Can you hold the radio in one hand and keep a pressure on Hines with the other? 
I can try. Now ease up on him just a little so I can see it. All right, gently now. That's good. You know, we've, we've got some pretty complicated construction on us. Yeah, the engineering's fine. Just wish we had a more experienced mechanic. All right, watch more. That's it. I got it. I got it, Doctor. Test it by releasing pressure. Okay, take your hand off. We got it made. You've taken the first step, Captain. You've still got to tie it off. Now be careful with that wire. If you cut through the artery, you probably won't get a second chance. One of you had better hold the pliers while the other ties. It'll be a two-handed job. All right, you take these. I'll try the tie. All right, now how, how do I handle this? Tie it around the artery like a piece of thread? Yes, but carefully. Wire cuts. Make a double knot impossible. All right. Can you hold that as tight as you can so I can get the wire behind it? But not too much pressure. We might break it, see? All right, here goes. I'm not exactly happy where I am, but I'm sure glad I'm not doing that job down there. Captain, call as soon as you get your time in. He's got the first knot, Doc. Just starting on the other. Yeah, that's it. I got a double knot. So what do I do now? Cut the wires? No. Don't touch anything yet. Test your knot by releasing the plier. Ease up as gently as you can. If the knot's not firm, you might lose the artery. Let's test it. The knot holds. Good. I will try to get some help to you. Norton Tower from Air Force Helicopter 0527. Air Force 527 from Norton Tower. Go ahead. Air Force 527 to Norton Tower. Above site of crash. Injured man safe. How close is the ground rescue team? 527 from Norton Tower. Roger. Rescue team will arrive at crash scene in approximately one hour. Give me Kovac again. Right. Helicopter to 421. Captain, the ground rescue team will be there in one hour. Sit tight. Is there anything else we can do for Hines now? You've already done it. I'll see you at the base. Congratulations, Doctor. Let's go back. Now that it's over, I feel worse than he does. Tell you more about Captain Michener and Sergeant Hines. in condition to celebrate his two-month anniversary, but he was fine by the time the three-month date rolled around. The flight surgeon, whether it be in preserving the health and the lives of airmen and their loved ones, or in experimenting with space medicine, is an indispensable figure in this age of flight. Yeah.